Hey guys, and welcome back to the internet. So, uh, I know I don't normally make tutorials of anything, but, uh, I figured I would share how I, uh, created my bouncing logo, you know, like the DVD logo thing. If you've watched my channel in the past, you've seen I've had, like, three different versions of it. So, uh, I'm just gonna show you how I did it, because when I was looking to, uh, create it in the first place, I couldn't find a tutorial for it anywhere, so I had to kind of come up with my own method. So, uh, let me just show you a little bit of how I did it. So, we're gonna be doing this in Premiere Pro. And there's a few things you're going to need for this. So first of all, you're going to need the logo that you're wanting to bounce around. So here is my base logo, and I have it... I just have a bunch of different uh, PNG files with different colors on it. Like, it's ideal if you want to have a bunch of different colors to cycle through when you bounce off the, the edges and stuff. Um, if you want to just keep it one color too, that you can make that work too, but it doesn't make it really any easier if you do that way. And then also, you're going to need... Um, you're going to need a video file of the DVD logo. This one's uh, 34 minutes. Uh, you can find these just... I mean, I got mine off of YouTube. I just recorded the screen for a little while. Uh, anyway, so I got basically 35 minutes of that. So we are just going to... Um, we're just going to import those. And then uh, also, here's a... You can also put something in like the background if you don't want it to just be plain black, but I'll add that in the end. All right, so down here we've got uh, a bunch of files. So uh, we're just going to start by throwing in the DVD logo. So, uh, yep, this is all we have. And uh, we're going you're going to want to use this because we're going to be tracing over it. All right. But uh, see how this doesn't quite reach the ends on either side? So first of all, let's unlink it, get rid of the audio because we don't need that. So uh, over here you're going to want to uh, change the scale. And so you're going to want to uncheck uniform scale so that you can scale the width out a little bit. Scale it out so that it hits the edges. Okay, so that so before it wouldn't quite hit the edges and now it's going a little bit too far it looks like. Yeah, you want it to just barely touch the edges so that it can... Uh... Alright, that looks pretty good now. So we're going to be tracing over this logo, and you're going to want your logo size to be very similar dimensions or aspect ratio to the DVD logo. So, I mean, while you're pulling your video file, you know, you can either just download it directly off of YouTube or you can uh, get some kind of screen capture, that's what I did, and just record the video. Since all of the YouTube videos for it are like 10 hours long, you can't really download them. So, um, so yeah, you're going to want a logo that's a very similar size to this. So let's just throw out, um, here, let's uh, just make this list view. Okay, so here's my logo, and it's a little bit bigger than the DVD logo. So uh, we're just going to scale that down a little bit. Uh, try and position right over it, just so that you get, okay, so it looks like we're not going to be able to uniform scale this one either. Um, Okay, so you want it, you want it to try and just line up all of the edges. All right, so it looks like I finally scaled it so that it fits the DVD logo. So you'll just want to change the scale height and scale width to kind of make it match up as close as possible. Now the reason you want it to match up completely, I'll kind of get to this later, is that you want it to hit the edges at exactly the same point. So now that we have the right, the correct size and dimensions of this whole thing. This is what we're going to be applying to uh, pretty much all of the others. So we can just copy this for now. So at the very beginning, this is where the location is. Now we're going to get to right there and then pause it. Uh, so it looks like that is still going over the edge. All right, so right here, you want to find the exact frame that it hits the corner, or hits the edge, which is right there. All right, so at that point, you're going to put another uh, position marker. So uh, for those of you who haven't used Premiere much, um, up here is sort of like the timeline of the thing you have selected. So at this point, it's set to be at this position, 1169387. And then when... And you're going to want to say that once it gets to this point, 
you're going to you're going to want it to be at 1670 all right so let's say 1670 there's four numbers you're going to want to keep in mind and uh, those four numbers you're going to have to figure out for yourself but it looks like for this case it's going to be 1670 which is the right edge um, over here it's going to be eh, let's say 250 that looks about close enough it's it's best if you pick like a memorable number that you can uh, stick to so that's 250 up here is 100 it looks like so I will be going off of the number 100 if it hits the top and down here it'll be 980 so 980 will be right there okay so yeah one of the advantages to making your own is that the DVD logo doesn't have any like specific like visible corners so even if so even when it does hit the corner it doesn't look as good alright so let's see what was it 1670 is our uh, uh, right side and then you're just going to want to line it right up with the logo alright and then that's pretty much all you do um, now we are going to add the next layer so that's so the way I have these uh, images lined up is there's just eight of them and it's just like you know number one PNG number two PNG number three so we're gonna throw in number three and we're just gonna we're just going to copy and paste attributes of the next one so uh, sorry it's been a <laughs> sorry it's been a while since I've actually done this alright so now that we've got this one we're going to go to the very end frame and it looks like it, the end frame is 1670 856 so right here you're gonna to want to get rid of the moving because you don't want it to move in the same spot But you're gonna go 1670 uh, 856 856 and then just start the start the uh, the clock thing and then say okay and then go to that frame and then put it put a marker and uh, what did we say that this one was uh, 980 and then just slide it over into place it looks like uh, the the DVD logo and this part doesn't quite hit the bottom yeah it kinda hovers let's see well it's pretty much close enough so let's see let's see what this looks like now so we'll just hide the DVD logo okay so that is the first part of it so that's literally what you're doing you're not actually bouncing the logo around the screen you're just saying okay at this point uh, make the red logo appear and move it from this spot to that spot and then once it hits that spot get rid of the red logo and put an orange one in its place at that same location so you're you're gonna be constantly checking up here where the location was that you left off and then start the next one right there and then say okay now spawn there and move from there to there in this much time and uh, yeah then you're just going to uh, keep going here we'll uh, bring that back so I'll just um so I'll show you like a couple more steps uh, you start to notice a loop after a while and then you can just copy and paste but it it's about 10 to 12 minutes worth of video before you can copy and paste it and to make that 10 to 12 minutes might take you a few hours usually for me to create a full like 30 minute segment of this takes me around four hours to put together but once you have it done um, yeah, you you're able to use it pretty much forever so it's a good investment I think okay so this so this orange one ends at 1555 980 so we're going to start this yellow one oh first off paste the attributes so it's the right size 1555 and 980 and start it at that point and then it goes and hits that and once it hits that point it's going to be at 100 and whatever this is and then just drag that down and then throw in this next one 
So this ends at 581 and 100. So you're going to just paste attributes of this one. 581, 100. Start the, start the movement. Go to that point. And uh, what was this? 250 on that edge. And uh, down to there. Now 250, 414, paste the attributes, get rid of that. 250, 414, start this, and then move to that position. All right, right at that frame. And then you're going to move it to 980, and right to there. So uh, let's just see what it looks like so far. Uh, let's just hide the DVD logo in the background. <clears throat> and there you go. That's pretty much how you make uh, the bouncing DVD logo. Now, uh, one more thing. Like I was saying with uh, the color changing thing, let me show you a problem you might run into. So, like, um, like let's say that you wanted to just do reds. So... Like, okay, so let's say you started it right here. So you moved it into this position. And you just wanted to go like, okay, let's just start this, uh, start like a keyframes and just change the keyframes every time it hits it. So you'd put like a keyframe there and then go over to 1670. Oh, that was the wrong one. 1670X, not Y. So you'd say, okay, let's move it to there. And now how about we just, you know, move, just go to the next and make another keyframe. You know, let's just try that and uh, move it out to there. I, I hate, one thing I hate with this DVD logo thing is that it disappears sometimes when it hits the edge. But let's just get a visible frame. So, okay, then once it gets to that point, we'll just have it there. And you'll just like pile up keyframes. But look at what the issue is here. So you'll have it go. It it does some weird movements. For some reason, when you add like multiple keyframes, it doesn't do it like robotically. It likes to like swing it around and loop it for some reason. I mean, there might be a way to change that. I honestly have no idea. I'm not an expert on Premiere, so, you know, maybe you could figure out something like that. But yeah, you cannot do all of this in one single like keyframe unless you don't mind it just like swinging around the corner because it's, yeah, that's not what you're looking for. Also, if you have like a long thing that's like 20 minutes long, you won't be able to see the keyframes on here very well. It would be really hard to edit if you had it all jammed into one image. So what I would do is... um. I would just uh, delete, I would just continue with um, putting in more images, even if it's just the same one, you just, uh, don't listen to what I'm, don't listen to what I'm saying, just uh, look at what I'm doing, because I can't talk and do this at the same time right now. So 1670, 243, 1670, 1670, 243 and then start the position and and then have it move to that position which is 100 and then slide it over this is why it's good to like remember each one of your edges like on each axis so you know like you can still do just one color but you're still gonna have to break it up that's why I say it it's pretty much worth it to have it change colors each time because you're not saving yourself any energy by just doing one color so um, let me just show you uh, what a f what a final project here looks like. All right, so this is what my final version looks like. So this is a uh, 34 minutes. I think that at around 12 minutes it loops, but I also slowed it down. So uh, while you are uh, working on it, it might be worth it to just slow the um, slow the DVD logo down 50% and go off of that. That way. Um, it's it's easier 
to fill more time. You have like less bumps. Like, I don't know if you noticed what we were just doing on that other one. It was moving twice as fast as this. And, you know, if you slow it down, it, you stretch it out, it reduces the amount of time it takes to put it together, basically. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I put the background thing back here. And it, when you look in, when you uh, zoom in, you'll see that it's just, you know, put a put an image right here and then have that disappear and then start a new one and then have that disappear, start a new one, move from that position to that position and then disappear and then start another one. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good when you get a finished product, you can speed it up. This also means that you are able to like speed up the corn. You can uh, make it hit corners all day if you want. Now I want to show you a little effect that I added to this one too. So like whenever it hits the corner, I give it like a glow effect. And really all that is, is uh, I just went on to the effects up here, sli slide glow onto it, and then just do like a short little keyframe that, uh, you know, illuminates it a little bit more and then goes away. I don't know. You can experiment with different effects you can add to it. But, um, like, technically, if you wanted to, you could just have it go back and forth between the corners. <laughs> like, uh, let's just, uh, over here, let's just... Uh, it's hard to work with sometimes. So, yeah, you could just have it go to there. And you could just aim it right for the corners each time. I don't know. Uh, hopefully this explains uh, how you put this together. I mean, there might be a faster way to do this. I don't know, but I'd, I've never seen another tutorial for this online. So you might be stuck with this really long, tedious method. But uh, good luck if you decide to go for this. And uh, thanks for watching.